Okay, so the purpose of this video is to show an example of tracing a function that returns a value. We've got a new version of Compute Cube now. It's almost exactly the same as it was before, but, um, well, first off, I changed a variable name in here. It's called puppy now instead of answer. And secondly, there's this weird return puppy line. So let's see what happens. Um, here we've got our command area scrap paper as normal, and let's just trace some code, see what happens. So the first line of code says age gets three, our friend the assignment statement, evaluate the right hand side, put it in the left, three evaluates to um, three. We're gonna put it in a box called age. We look in our command area scrap paper, is there a box called age already? Nope, so we make a new one, we put three in it, it's an integer, great. Okay, next line of code's a little bit more strange to us. Still an assignment statement, right? X gets compute cube two. Um, evaluate the right hand side, put the answer in the left. So we're going to evaluate the right hand side of this, which means run compute cube on two. Okay, well, we mostly know how to do that apart from that return line. So what we do is we make a new piece of scrap paper, put the name of the function up at the top. We look at the function definition, any arguments to the function? Yep, there's one called num, so we're going to make a new box for num. What goes into num? Well, we look at the information inside the parentheses, right, the, the um, actual parameter, and that's a 2. So we're going to put a 2 in here, and that's an int. And now we can start running our function. So puppy gets num times num times num. All right, evaluate the right-hand side, put it in the left. Num is 2, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Put it into puppy. Well, there's no, remember, we're all working on, the, on this scrap paper now. There's no box called puppy. So make a new box called puppy, it's an int, it gets eight into it. The next line of code says return puppy. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow up a balloon or a bubble or something with the number eight in it. And that's just gonna float around for a minute while our function quits. So as usual, our function quits. And we're back at this line of code. We evaluated the right hand side and our answer is whatever we returned. So in this case, our answer is this value of eight that's kind of floating around. So this says X gets eight. Um, we look on our command area scrap paper, right? We're back in the command area. There is no box called X, so we make a new box. It's an int, put eight in it. And then our balloon pops or our bubble pops or something, it's gone. We only had it for a second, it's gone. We're ready to take the next step. The next line of code says print x. Okay, well, we know what to do. We evaluate x, that's eight, so we're gonna print an eight. Terrific. Next step. Here's a line of code that is a little bit confusing. It says compute cube age. This is, of course, how we ran our old version of compute cube. Um, but when we run compute cube now, let's see what happens. So we make a new piece of scrap paper. We write the name up here. We look inside our um, definition. Yep, we need a box called num that goes here. Um, what goes into the num box? Well, we look at the parameter inside the inside the parentheses, the argument, right? The actual parameter the, in here. And it's age in the command area and age in the command area is three. So we're gonna put a three into the num box. Great, now we run our function. Puppy gets num times num times num, evaluate the right hand side, put it in the left. Num times num times num. Okay, three, three, three is 27. We wanna put that into a box called puppy. There is no box called puppy inside of our compute cube area. So we make one, we put 27 in there. It says return puppy. And of course I used the word puppy here. Did I say this before? Because I want you to know that you can, you can call this variable whatever the heck you want. Whatever it says return, it gets returned. So here's our bubble. 27 was what was in puppy. So 27 is what's gonna get returned. Our function gets crossed out. We go back and look at this line for a minute. We evaluated the function, we ran it. It resulted in 27, but there's nowhere to put it. So goodbye 27, it's gone. That's it, nothing happens. We're ready for our next command. So we did all that work, dropped it on the floor, it popped, it's gone. Okay. How about this one? Y gets compute cube age. Well, now we've got an assignment statement evaluate the right-hand side, put the answer in the left. So now we can run compute cube on age, make a new piece of scrap paper, put compute cube in it, make a box called num, right? Because we looked up here, we know the box is called num. We're gonna put age inside of 
the command area into num, so that gets a three. We run the function, puppy gets num times num times num. No puppy box here, so we make a new one and put 27 in it. Return puppy, so whatever's in the puppy box at this point gets put into our bubble or our balloon. We are done the function. When we're done the function, we cross it out. Then we take our split second to go back here and say, huh, that evaluated 27, do we put it anywhere? Oh yeah, and why? Is there a box for why? Nope, not yet, so we gotta make a new one. And 27 goes away. Cool, all right, last line of code. Now it says print wow and then why. So notice that now we can print different things um, using our compute cube function, right? Before compute cube, when it had the print statement inside of it, we couldn't do much with it, right? We could just print it and that was pretty much it. However, the function said to print it, but now we can change stuff. So we want to print a string followed by the value of y. So we do it. Hope that helps.